Hi everyone and welcome along to today's watercolour tutorial. We are going to paint a lovely loose watercolour floral arrangement using all the flowers we've been painting throughout January. So if you haven't looked at what we've been doing so far this month, we've got the crocus, the carnation, snowdrop, loads of flowers, go and have a look at those and then come back here and we'll get started. Right then, we have been painting some lovely wintery, winter to spring flowers, I guess, on the channel this January. And I thought it was high time for a loose arrangement featuring a number of them. So I'm just mixing up some colors, getting our palette ready, and we're going to do a lovely loose arrangement. So we're gonna start off with some really, really dilute tones in the background. Now we have got, we've got carnation we've done, we've done snowdrops, we've done tulips quite recently, we've done crocuses, and we've done irises. Lots of blues, purples and pinks and oranges as well. So I am going to sort of base my palette around those tones, but we're not gonna be 100% kind of uh, naturalistic in all times with this arrangement. I want there to be a little bit of sort of imagination going on. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna do a few uh, background shapes first in a really, really dilute bit of this orange sort of blush tone here. And I did a, a loose arrangement with poppies um, in November last year. So if you haven't had a look at that, go and have a look at it too, because it's the same premise that we're just gonna start off with some very, very dilute, almost invisible. So just little sort of wild stems to shape, just to give us a little bit of something in the background. So I'm just creating some very, very loose and kind of nondescript little, they almost look like little lavender shapes or little ears of corn, but I just need these to be the kind of backup texture, almost, I guess, for my piece. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be loosely building up shapes to create a lovely arrangement. And the first bit of advice I can give you is to think about curves. So you see all of these things are on curves. We want this to have a lovely, abundant life to it. Um, now I'm going to drop in just the tiniest bit of some sap green to these bits. I'm just building up a very, very dilute color palette at this stage. So bear with and you will see it all come to life. Okay, so I'm going to allow these to dry and then we'll go on to the next section. These are dry now and you can just see their edges are crisping up just a tiny bit, which is great. So I'm now going to put in another very, very, very dilute shape with some greeny blue that is, like I said, almost invisible and we're going to put in some tulips okay oh got a bit of orange there it's the trouble when you're using very dilute colors the tiniest bit of influence even from that water jar can really affect things okay happy with that so i'm going to paint in A very, very simple loose tulip with hardly any colour. And just uh, this is where we really do start getting a little bit um, more sort of expressive. I'm just going to place in a leaf that isn't sort of completely attached to that tulip, but 
it's helping us with our composition. Okay, so let those dry and then we can start getting on with some things with some real colour. This is now a lovely canvas upon which I can start putting in my flowers. So I'm going to begin with a few tulips. So here, no, tulips, I've done tulips, snowdrops, beg your pardon. And I am going to begin with just curving one up over the top here. And if you haven't already had a look at the snowdrop tutorial, then you can find it very easily in our flowers and foliage section. And you, if you have seen it, you'll know that I'm doing a version of it that is very similar, but is even looser than the one we did in the main tutorial. And I think it's really important, if you like this loose style of painting, um, and I don't know if you've tried it before, but a lot of people actually find this style of painting harder than painting something quite precise. And I've always found that you really need to paint something properly and in detail before having a go at breaking it down, sort of constructing, deconstructing it, I suppose. Okay, so that's the curve. Comes down. And then we need a little cup of green. So this is more of, I suppose, a, a fun kind of celebration as we come to the end of the month of all the flowers that we're starting to see poking through. I mean, I actually woke up to snow this morning, which was pretty amazing. Okay, and then a little bit of that colour. Beautiful. So you see, we're just starting to build up layers really, really simply, but it's rather lovely. And I'm also going to just loosely add in a few little leaves. Okay, we don't want to get too carried away with each flower. We've got lots to pack in. I'm now going to pop in a carnation. Now carnations are a flower I've really come to become very fond of, uh, having had a go at painting them in January. So I'm thrilled about that because I think I, I rather dismissed them before as just slightly sort of naff flowers. So I'm excited to add one in, get the fluff off my brush. Okay, I'm gonna use my size two brush. Um, as a carnation has an amazing sort of open top cup at the top of the flower um, and it's a really sort of nice broad flower um, I want to think about where I'm going to place it in so we're going to have one here I think and maybe one down here and a few buds okay it was me just sort of gesturing with my pencil again if you haven't had a go at the carnation tutorial go and check it out so starting with this cup shape and I also wanted to add in a bit of the blush colour. So I've got Alizar in crimson, a little bit of cadmium orange just off camera there. And start with the sort of cup and then I am just creating the petals to come out from the side. nice and loose and then with a little brush just getting a little bit of slightly more concentrated alizar and crimson and creating a frill if you've got slightly wobbly hands well this is this is for you <laughs> So for me, the carnation is all about the unpainted space. Not overloading. 
this painting with too much. So we'll just drop in a dab of that around the base. And I think the little bit of crispness you get from adding this very fine wobbly line that sometimes catches the edge of the wet petal, sometimes doesn't, just works really nicely to crisp up the petal and make sure that it's not just a blob, which it's very easy to end up with when you are painting loose watercolour flowers. Okay, I'm going to paint another one towards the top. So starting with a C curve cup and then all the petals anchoring out from the centre. Sort of scribbling with the brush a little bit. Um, I think it's got a real similarity to painting a loose peony personally. underneath. And remember we are still working in very translucent colours. We want all our flowers to feel like they belong together on the same page, even though we are getting a bit more detail with our carnation. Lovely, and then we need to think about connecting this all with a stem. Normally we'd put in the stem earlier, but because this is a loose piece, I just sort of wanted to see how it was all gonna go. So it feels like thinking downwards. That's quite nice. And then I'm going to get a little bit of Prussian blue, a bit of sap green. And I want to do the leaves. I'm going to get a bit more of that colour in. And I think it'd be nice to pop a bud in as well, so I might just use my smaller brush on this stem. And let's get a bud coming in there. And one there. And this one will come right from the bottom. That's the thing, if you use a small brush when you're doing loose painting, there's not a lot of space on that brush for all the paint. So you do really want to try and use a larger brush but I appreciate that, especially when you're newer to this style of painting, you want the control. But you see, we're really starting to build up lots of movement. It's looking really nice. Okay, so for these buds, what I'm going to do is just do a, a loose shape like that, a little bit like a tulip. And then, because it is a loose painting, 
I'm going to get a little bit more concentrated sap green and I am going to very carefully just create the little sepal cup and not disturb that pink too much. And then of course, because it's a carnation, it's a little bit of frill at the top. Okay, I'm pleased with this so far. I think we could do maybe with some uh, crocuses popping through and then we've, oh gosh, we've also got the iris, haven't we? Okay, let's have a think about the iris. So we need a purpley blue for these remaining flowers. So I've got a mix of cobalt blue deep there and French ultramarine. It's got a little bit of alizar and crimson and hey presto, we've got ourselves a purple. And of course you can mix it back or forth between the pink side to the blue side. And I'm just gonna do a super, super loose iris Mm, actually, I'll do one here. Get the fluff off my brush. Now, we did a video the other day of an iris that was about 35 minutes long. You will soon see that it doesn't have to be the case. There we go, that's a slightly different approach. And that's the beauty of watercolour is it can really be what you want it to be. And I'm gonna pop in sort of emergings of a little iris in there. Sometimes all you need is just the, the suggestion of that colour lurking in there. You're all good. Okay, let's pop some crocuses in. I'm going to get a bit more colour. just want them to be able to stand out a little bit. So many flowers at this time of year are that sort of cup shape, aren't they? That then turn into something a little more open. They're all protecting themselves from the frost, I imagine, until the absolute last moment. Okay, that's looking really nice. I think the only other thing we can do is maybe just add tiny bit more definition to our carnations in the middle there, only a fraction more. And there we go, a lovely loose arrangement of January flowers. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that. Um, I want to say a big thank you to my patrons for your support because your support enables me to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button below and comment below to let me know how you're getting on. And of course, if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Okay, until next time, bye.